Good evening. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make a spinach and feta frittata. You're going to need 12 large eggs, a bag of frozen spinach, I got chopped spinach, and a container of feta. This was on sale. It's a tomato basil feta. And of course you'll need a bowl and a pan. I don't know how big this pan is. It's like a little bit smaller than a 9 by 13. You guys can't see my face. There we go. Hi guys. So I'm just cracking all these eggs into a big old bowl. But you'll need salt and pepper to taste too. Don't forget that. You gotta season your food, make it tasty. So oh, I went out to Harris Teeter today to get a flat of two and a half dozen of eggs. I got three of those. That's all we do apparently is eat eggs in this house. Eggs are a very affordable form of protein and fat. There we go. Glorious. So, if you want to save some money, uh, you can make egg dishes. I love making frittatas because I get eight servings out of the pan. Do you count these eggs? Okay, that was six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Oh, preheat your oven to 350, please. And if you're not using a non-stick pan, this is a Reynolds pan that I found in my cupboard, and it's non-stick. 11. So, yeah, pretty, pretty excited about that. But if you're using a regular pan, a 9 by 13, spray it, butter it, olive oil, something. All right, so we have 12 eggs. Now, I'll add salt and pepper now. Just salt, it's just to taste. I'll probably put more salt on it later. I like salt. And then we've got the pepper. Other variations of this, um, you could do chorizo and uh, like uh, cheddar, ham and cheese, kale and sausage. You could add like chili spices. Make it like a, a Tex-Mex theme. You can do all sorts of things with a frittata. So it's so versatile. And that smells so good. That pepper right now. Holy moly. All right. Whisk the eggs together until they're scrambled well. If you like my apron, I remember to put one on today so I wouldn't get my shirt dirty. combined. There we go. We'll put in our cheese and our spinach. Now this it has two grams of carb per serving which is a fourth of a cup. There's about four servings in this. Now what I like about feta is it's very strong tasting so you don't really need a lot. You can use whatever cheese you prefer. I just they were buy one get one so I snagged these up. I'm just going to test it out for, you know, science reasons. That's nice. That will make one carb per serving. Now this has eight servings, so three carbs. So right now, we are going to have four carbs per slice, because it makes eight slices. Where are my scissors? Be right back. All right, folks, now is the fun part. You're going to 
try to squeeze some of the liquid out of here without making a mess into your sink. Now you can use cheesecloth or a towel, but I normally just cut a little hole and go to town. You want to squeeze as much of the liquid out as you can. <laughs> it makes fun noises when you do it this way. <laughs> Try not to lose any of the spinach. <laughs> you know, I have a strainer I could use, and I probably should use it. Trying to cut corners, gotta do it right, right? Measure twice, cut once. It works just as well with cooking. Alrighty, so we're gonna put it in a strainer, mesh strainer, and use a spoon or a spatula and just press down on the spinach to help remove some of the excess liquid. You can do this, the same thing it's gonna do with uh, the, the frozen kale that you've defrosted. And this is defrosted. I, I figured you guys would know that, but just in case, defrost your spinach. <laughs> defrost your greens. Sausage and kale is a really good frittata as well. You just take a breakfast sausage that doesn't contain any fillers, and you cook it up like ground beef, you know, crumble it, let it cool, and then do the same thing with the kale that I'm doing with spinach, and then throw it in with your eggs, mix it up, it's really good. There we go. Now. Break that up and mix that together. Bum, bum, bum. At one point, I didn't really want to cook too much, so I was making a frittata for breakfast, lunch, and dinner at three different times. And that's what I did for a while, because, you know, sometimes you just don't have time to cook, but you want to still eat good. And I would just add like an extra vegetable as a side. So there was always like some sort of like dark leafy green. Then I'd have like broccoli or fried radishes. You can actually fry radishes up like potatoes and make like hash. It's really good. I'll show you guys that. All right, now that it is all nice and mixed up, you're gonna pour it into a greased pan. Get all that goodness in there. Beautiful green, la da 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 da, deliciousness. Okay, now you're gonna put this in 350 degree oven for 45 to 50 minutes until it's, it'll, if you press on the top, it'll spring back and it's not liquidy in the center. And I will show you the finished product in a second. All right, the frittata just came out of the oven and it looks glorious. Oh, so pretty. Now I'm gonna let that cool and I'll slice it up into eight slices and me and my husband will actually eat this every morning for breakfast for the next few days. Now you get eight servings, so you can make a couple and then what I'll do is slice it up and then put them in baggies, wrap them in wax paper, and put them in a big bag, store them in the freezer, and then you can pull out a variety throughout the week. Thank you so much for watching my video, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll keep on this whole roll of making videos for you guys. Thank you.